Good morning and thank you all for joining this latest webinar from Mid and East Antrim Borough Council's Economic Development Department. This session is being recorded, as Camilla has said, and we will make it available online afterwards. I'm sure, like me, you feel somewhat daunted by the overnight change from doing business in person to doing business in a virtual world. No longer can we greet each other, our customers and our clients, with a firm handshake, look them in the eye and work the room like we were so accustomed to doing. Now we are at the mercy of our internet connections. I am delighted to introduce public speaking and leadership coach Camilla Long, Director of Bespoke Communications, to enlighten us on how we can develop our presentation skills and techniques to stand out and to make an impact in an online marketplace. Over to you, Camilla. Thanks very much, Jacqueline. It's fantastic to be here. It's a great opportunity for me to have a chance to chat with some folks that suddenly have been thrust into a brave new world. Give me a moment whilst I get my screen shared with you. I've got some slides that I'm going to run through with you um, this morning. So let me know if you can't see those folks, but hopefully by now you should be able to see a screen with that ubiquitous Zoom window. Oh my goodness, how many of these calls have we been on in the last couple of months? I hope that I'm speaking to you all at a time when your families are safe and well, and that everybody who works within your company and um, within your wider family and community network have found themselves safe, locked down and coming through with their health intact at the other side of what has been a very, very stressful and changeable time for everybody. We are now at the point in um, the COVID-19 pandemic where we're starting to look to the future. We're starting to think about what does a new normal look like? And actually, if the last two months have taught us anything, those of us in business have learned that actually the online world is going to be here for, look, the experts are predicting all sorts of timeframes, but the reality is I think a lot of what we used to do face-to-face -face is going to be online for quite a considerable time to come. And you know, what works when you're presenting at an in-person event, louder, faster, stronger, doesn't work when you're presenting in an online world. So it represents an opportunity for you to change the way that you do things, to change, to change up your presentation style, but it really does represent an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one engagement with your client audience. Right now, you're all sitting watching me from your homes. You're watching me without the benefit of the, the people in your office around you. So I actually am speaking to you. I, I've got a one-on-one -on -one relationship going on with you. So even though there may be a number of you sitting at this event, you're all sitting in your own private spaces. So it's giving me an opportunity to connect with each one of you individually. Um, really what we're going to talk about throughout the session today is the three reasons why you actually quit the last webinar you attended. So many of us are spending so much of our time at webinars and we don't necessarily stay the course for all of them. So three reasons why you ended up leaving that webinar and three reasons why your next attendees won't leave the webinar, your next webinar. Look, thanks very much to Mid and East Antrim Borough Council. The reality is all of your client companies now at this stage are going out into the world where perhaps sales reps visited their clients face-to-face. -face. Factories now are on lockdown. Non-essential visitors are not allowed through the door. So in order to engage with our clients, we're having to um, present online, we're having to pitch online, we're having to deliver our events online. I'm seeing good news stories coming out of the borough. It was brilliant to see, um, it was Island McGee Company, DNES, uh, who collaborated with Ashgrove Engineering in Port Clonone to produce these hand sanitizer. Um, this new hand sanitizer system it was a fantastic press release that I saw um, the council coming out with this week. Look, we've all walked into the shops and seen those plastic bottles of hand sanitizer that you really don't want to touch. This is a foot operated um, hand sanitizer unit. I really, really do wish the companies very well with that because that is a product that's needed at this time. People are innovating, people are adapting, and this is where we're at at the moment. This was what we used to talk about, death by PowerPoint. This is a statistic, I'm sorry to say, that has emerged from the United States in the last couple of years. Some people would prefer no sex at all to a bad PowerPoint. And just because we're doing it online doesn't mean that anything has changed there necessarily. Um, an online event though, it is different. 
very often we would turn up at a live event and a speaker might speak for a, a long period of time and you've left none the wiser. Our online events are more condensed. I've attended three conferences in the last two months, which were two hours long. Now, we're given to believe that 50% of the reason why people attend conferences is to listen to speaker content. Probably a large percentage of the reason why people attend conferences is for the networking opportunities. And unfortunately, that's not necessarily something that we've got access to online. But the reality is, if you can get your message across to your audience in a shorter period of time, everybody's going to be happy. So we've got to learn how to condense things down. Um, there are risks with running an online event. There is no question about it. Um, first of all, the reason to run a, a, an event is to burnish your reputation, but you open that event up out to the world and every, you're, you're standing there, you're pretty naked, everybody can see what's going on. So it's so important to get it right because by putting your event online, you are opening yourself out to a wider audience. The other issue is, of course, understanding the technology platform. I was working with a law firm in London recently and um, they had invited along a panelist to speak at one of their online events. And look, every platform is different. There are little nuances. And this speaker was unaware of the fact that as attendees were starting to arrive, they could overhear him. And unfortunately, he chose that very moment um, in the few moments before the event got started to make some derogatory remarks about the attendees that were coming. So absolutely shattered his reputation, left a very, very, very bad taste in the mouth of everybody who was at that event. So that event, there's risk. There absolutely is risk. So understanding the technology, understanding the platform, understanding the ins and outs of all of that is absolutely key. One of the other areas that I've been working with a number of our clients on over um, in the last month in particular is, we were just discussing it this morning with the team at the council, the AGM. Now, an AGM of a publicly listed company is very often an opportunity for people to come along and express their opinions. Um, an AGM, there's a real friction there between accessibility, allowing people who've got a stake in your company to have their say, but also how do you shut that down? How do you prevent these things that we're hearing about, things like Zoom bombing? How do you prevent that all going out of control? So making sure that people don't feel upset because they've been excluded, if they've got a point of view that they want to share, well, they need to have a platform to share that, but also making sure that you as the organizer can keep control of the event. Lots of considerations there for you. So running an event is never going to be 100% risk fee free. How do you mitigate those risks? Well, look, our agenda today, um, we've already run over a little bit, but um, I'll try and stick to time as much as possible. We've gotten started about five minutes late, but a couple of introductions at the start. I really want to get into the meat of my content now and explain three reasons why your audience wants to stick around for your webinar. I'm going to speak for about 15 minutes and then I'd like to open up the floor to you for questions and answers, quick Q&A. So if you've got any questions as I'm speaking, pop them up in the q and I've got the support and help of both Jacqueline and Sean here to keep me right with the technology. So thank you both very much. But Jacqueline and Sean will help to moderate those questions. Once we've um, had a look at some of those at uh, that q and I'm going to give you some technical tips for running your next webinar. And then I hope to wrap everything up, start summarizing the event by about 10 past 11. And I'll stick around then at a quarter past 11 to do q and more in-depth q and If you've got specific questions that you want to ask me, I'll be all yours at a quarter past 11. So let's get stuck in. Why am I speaking to you today? Well, Jacqueline has given you a little hint as to my background. I'm a computer scientist by trade. I suppose enterprise technology platforms is very much my background. But for the last five years, I have been a public speaking and presentation skills coach. And I've been working with my clients to help them get up on that stage, deliver that keynote. So as you can imagine, when lockdown hit, suddenly an order book for my company, I'm, sit, I'm looking at you right now um, from the slide with my lovely business partner, former BBC presenter, Sarah Travers, we spend our lives at live events. So as lockdown hit, our order book just completely evaporated. Literally in a single weekend, everything that we had booked in disappeared. And we thought, right, what's happening here? What do we do about this? And we sat back and thought about things. But actually what we found in the last month is that there just are not enough hours in the day. All of our clients have realized we are moving to a new normal now. We're moving to a new platform. 
How do we do that? How do we make the most of that? So we have been exceptionally busy working with our clients to help them get videos out, to relay their message, to help them to run their webinars, to help them host their webinars. So it's been, it's been a very, very busy time. I think people are really having to adapt to a new normal and look, we're delighted to be in a position to be able to help, help our clients with that. And look, there've been so many mistakes along the way. We have made so many mistakes ourselves. We have seen so many things happen. That's what I want to try and get across to you today. The things that work and the things that don't in particular in an online world. These are some of our clients and some of the events that we've been involved in. Um, if you look at Ulster University, they're running a competition for their researchers there. They moved it online and they suddenly discovered that twice as many people wanted to sign up. People felt as though uh, running that competition over the internet was an easier thing than standing up in a room full of people and delivering a presentation. Learning Pool, lovely Learning Pool based in Derry, um, had an event um, that they were due to hold in London for about 100 people. They moved it online, got 400 people signing up from 12 different countries. So absolutely opened out their audience there. Legal Island, the fantastic legal advice firm based in Antrim. Um, ran one of their events online where typically they would be inviting people into a hotel room. They really are positioning themselves as thought leaders in the legal space when it comes to um, a COVID world and how companies are managing their workforces. They managed to attract 700 attendees from the length and breadth of Ireland. So absolutely moving on to an online platform for them has been a way of getting a new audience. PwC, One Firm One Day is their huge big um, employee engagement event. They typically run fundraising and um, it's a fun day for everyone to take out of the office. They moved that online and the social media response to that was explosive. So there are opportunities there for you to, to capture um, an absolutely attendant market for your event. What's your takeaway going to be from today? I hope that by the end of today's session, you'll realize that actually online events are different. You can't just move the same format across. And how do you make the most of that? Um, how do you use that new format as an opportunity for your business at these challenging times? Um, this is a top tip that I got from the Positive Economist, fantastic lady called Susan Hayes Culliton. Uh, she suggested for all of these online events that we're all attending to maximize your takeaways from events, this event and every other event, why not write a blog post and share it? So over here, I've got a, a recent attendee at a, a webinar that I ran for women in business. She wrote a blog post summarizing what she took away from the event and popped it up on her LinkedIn. Or over here, we've got um, somebody tweeting um, takeaways from an event that she attended. So please do consider this, take some notes, see if you can generate a blog post or, or tweet out your takeaways. You can tag myself or uh, Mid and East Antrim Council and we'll be sure to amplify your tweets or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn with that blog post. So here is why you're here. Three reasons why your audience is going to stick around for your webinar. First things first, why? Why are, you, why are you running that event? Have you given the necessary thoughts to that? How? A lot of the time we think about what it is that we're going to say and we don't necessarily think about how we're going to say it. And what, finally, what is it that you're actually going to say? What content have you actually got to deliver to your audience? So let's step into those and look at them first of all. Start with why. And there's a fantastic TED talk that I really recommend that you watch when it comes to the why of anything that you do. And certainly when it comes to a webinar, it will be just as helpful. Um, How Great Leaders Inspire Action by Simon Sinek. I recommend that you spend 18 minutes of your life watching that TED talk. It really gets to the heart of this particular issue. You're, you may be running your webinar because maybe your marketing team came to you and said, uh, we can't go dark. We need to make sure that we're out there in front of our clients. We need to make sure that we're relevant. Or maybe you have a full schedule of events um, that you've been planning and you've realized that you can't run them um, in person anymore. So you need to move them online. There are good reasons to, ru to run an event, but they're probably not the best reason to run an event. When you're thinking about running your event, this is the first place for you to start. Your audience and where they're coming from and what their needs are. So what I mean by that is, I always talk about a message is nothing without context. And if you consider the needs of that audience who's attending your event right now, it's quite possible that they're dealing with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of confusion, a lot of challenges within their business. How are you gonna help them right now? Or how are you going to help them 
to project into the future and navigate a new world. Consider their needs, consider the context to um, consider the context to the, to the to the reasons why they're coming along to, to your event. So if, for example, you're a subject matter expert, what is it that you're going to deliver to, the, to your audience that's going to help them immediately with something that they can apply to their life? Or it may be that if you're, for example, a clinician and you're working with patients, you may indeed be helping them with something that literally could be a matter of life and death. So think about why your audience would want to come along and attend your event. Because after all, it's a little bit like that port rush lifeboat, lifeboat rushing out across those huge, huge waves, across that choppy, stormy sea. You're like that lifeboat. You're there to help your clients, to guide your clients, to give them advice, to move them to a place where they need to get to. You, you can be that reassuring presence to come along and support them with that journey. And to do that, there is no better way than to think of WIFM. And what I mean by WIFM is, what's in it for me? Why should I attend this event? So imagine a real person who represents your audience. It may be um, a manager, it may be a parent, maybe a young person, a clinician, maybe a, a, a sports athlete. One of these individuals may well be your target audience. Now, identify a real person who represents that audience, identify a real manager, a real young person, and explain to them what your event is all about. What kind of a reaction do you get from them? And be honest about it and listen hard to what it is they're saying. When you tell them what your event is about, do you get, hmm, that sounds interesting, or do you get, wow, that's exactly what it is that I need? Or, do you know, that just sounds like it's just going to be a whole lot of extra work for me to do. Listen to what that person says. And if they're not jumping on board your idea, rethink the reason for delivering that webinar. Get really, really specific with what it is that you're, you're offering to your audience. Because after all, if you don't know what the destination looks like, how can you possibly deliver that? So once you've thought about the why of your event, the next thing to consider is how. And this is uh, according to medium.com, 32% of the reason why people enjoy webinars, why they turn up to webinars, why they continue to attend webinars is because of the passion and conviction of the speaker. So a knowledgeable speaker who's able to convey their interest in the topic is, is going to be one of the most compelling reasons for people to stick with your webinar. And very often when we're preparing our webinars, we don't give a lot of consideration to the how. How are you coming across? Do you look excited to be there? You know what, it may well be that you feel a little bit anxious about delivering your first webinar, or it may be a topic that you don't know a great deal about. After all, so many of us are navigating a whole new world at the moment, and this may be something that is not familiar to you. Well, you know what, neither is your audience. So just make sure you get out there and share that expertise with them with enthusiasm and conviction, because if you don't show that you're interested in the topic, why should they? This is really, really key. So many of us spend all of the time thinking about what it is that we're going to say, and we don't give enough consideration to this. How are we going to say it? And when it comes to that, I'm not talking about paramedics or paralegals. I'm talking about the paraverbals. And what paraverbals are is that nonverbal communication. And if you look at a message that's being relayed and how your audience perceives that message, look at the percentage of that message that relates to the words that are being delivered. So if there's incongruence, if there's a mismatch between the words, if you as a speaker cannot introduce that passion and conviction and that belief in what it is that you're saying, actually, people are not listening to what it is that you're saying at all. So your vocal tone, can you vary that vocal tone? There's a great, another great TED talk that you might consider watching by a chap called Julian Treasure. Google Julian Treasure, there's a set of vocal exercises that he introduces in that TED talk that can be a really, really helpful thing for you to do before you come on a webinar. Because if you deliver your webinar in a monotone like this, you will have them tuning out in their droves. Body language, you know what? In an online world, we don't necessarily have the benefit of all of that rapport that we would at an in-person event, but you do have your face, you do have your smile, and that smile, if your smile can light up the screen, I guarantee you that enthusiasm and conviction will come across to your audience. So watch those power verbals, it's so important. Because after all, according to the Harvard Business School, the way to influence is to begin with warmth. If your audience can trust you, then that will facilitate trust, communication, and the absorption of ideas. They're far more likely to take your message on board 
if they trust you, if they can warm to you, if they can connect with you. And you know what, we are a nation of multitaskers. The chances are that as you're watching this webinar, 65% of you are doing other work. Um, if you are one of the 9% of people who's on the treadmill right now, I salute you with that. Um, but if you're, one, if you're one of the one in four who's got the PlayStation controller in your hands, well, maybe have a little think about that blog that we talked about at the top of the session and try that instead. So think about how you're delivering that webinar. People need to see your face. If you're a veteran of webinars in the old days, it was very common for us to deliver a voiceover across our slides. It is so much more engaging if people can see your face. That can be anxiety inducing, brings up all that, those feelings of imposter syndrome. So you can be like me when I delivered my very first webinar. Um, this is actually not my house, by the way, but I set up my webinar in um, my study. I, to set up my hosting and then I gathered up every single device in the house, the iPads, the phones, everything that I could find and set them up in different rooms to test how people could come on board, to test how I looked. So I propped up a teddy bear and my Spotify account was playing in the background and I went around the house to see how was I coming across, how did that sound come across. So test it out, test it out with your friends in, um, in, in, in their homes, make sure that you feel comfortable with the technology. Co-host, co-host, co-host. I've got Jacqueline and Sean here today who've got my back. So I know that I can focus 100% on what it is that I want to say. I don't have to worry about the technology. So do try and um, get the services of a co-host. We all remember this BBC dad from a few years ago. How old fashioned that now seems. We have met uh, pretty much all of our colleagues' pets, their children. Um, you could be like that Spanish journalist where perhaps he had... Um, he had somebody in the background appearing with no clothes on who actually turned out not to be his wife. So we are meeting a lot of people on webinars nowadays. I think people have gotten pretty relaxed about that. So don't feel bad if you get interrupted, just keep going. Just as this particular BBC commentator did from North Korea a number of years ago. So look, I think that smile is your superpower. Out of this how section, if I could emphasize one thing, it's get that smile on your face and you will make that connection with your audience. And we'll move on to the what. Before I finish this section, I want to talk a little bit about the structures that you can use. There's one key structure that's gonna help you with literally any presentation that you give, but particularly a webinar. 38% of the impact of a webinar is actually well-delivered content. So going back to your audience again, let's pick a really focused topic, get that why nailed. So I could have done a session today on learning how to deliver a presentation in an online format, but instead, what I'm actually doing is take, helping you to take the risk out of your communication and find out how you can manage your webinar for real success with your clients and stakeholders. Get that topic really, really laser sharp, really, really focused. Two things that you should never do at a live presentation, but that are essential for your webinar. First things first, that agenda slide. At a live event, nobody wants to see an agenda. At a webinar, we need to set people's expectations. So run an agenda at the beginning of your webinar. And you see this, any questions slide? I'm going to arrive at the Q&A part of um, today's event very shortly. And rather than have my presentation lingering on the last thing that I spoke about, when the questions that are coming up may bear no relation to that particular topic, I have an any questions slide, which is something that I would never do at a live event. But it's important in the online world. So let's take a look at this um, proprietary tool that we use at Bespoke Communications to structure almost any presentation. But for a, a webinar, it's a really, really handy little device for you to use. It's something that we call the SARA structure. So setting the scene, make sure that when your audience arrive, they know why it is that they're there. How do you deliver your why? Break down your why into a really practical approach and then motivate your audience with the results that they can expect if they use your information. So by the end of today's session with me, I hope that you will have the confidence to get out there and to deliver a webinar that has real impact with your clients. Conclude with a call to action. What can they do next? How can they get more information? If what you've said has been fascinating to them, can they come to you for further, can they come to your company for further advice? Are there websites that you can direct them to? The SARA structure. First of all, the setting the scene. This is the hook. How can you get people interested in what it is that you're saying? What are the little nuggets? What are the problems that you've been experiencing with your clients that you can help them with? 
your approach. You know what? We've talked about this. We're all, char we're all in unprecedented times at the moment. You may not be the expert, but you are an expert. You may not have all of the answers, but you certainly will have a large number of the answers. It's perfectly fine to not know everything about what's, what's happening in the world at the moment, but if you're bringing that expertise and experience to bear, that's all that your clients can put, that your webinar attendees can possibly ask for. Have you got a new perspective on an age old topic? Is there something surprising that you've seen from conversations with your clients that you can bring to your webinar? Can you challenge a belief? Do people believe a certain thing about what's going on in the world at the moment, but your experience is radically different? How can you bring a new perspective to your audience? Paint a picture with words for them. Describe, tell them stories, bring case studies, give examples of how this has worked for other people. And make sure that you're delivering results to them. As a result of what I'm saying to you, I'm solving one of your biggest headaches. I will save you money or potentially like my law firm client, I will, I will end up saving your reputation by making sure that you don't make critical mistakes like that. By coming along to this webinar, will you, will you save your clients time? Time is money after all, and certainly at the moment, time is something that's in very short supply for a number of people. What's your takeaway? Where can they go for more information? You might consider scripting your webinar to make sure that you stick to time. And at this stage, I would like to open up the floor to any questions. If there's anything that I have said on, on, um, so far at today's event that you would like further clarity on, I'm all ears. I want to spend a couple of moments with you now answering questions before I jump into some of the technical tips that um, we, we, we might cover. I've just realized too, as I was talking, I realized that I actually never did run a poll. So do you know what? It might be a good time now, Jacqueline, to launch that first poll. I was halfway through my presentation. And I realized that I'd forgotten to do it. So if you don't mind answering that poll, and if you've got any questions, I would love to hear them. So let me see if there are any questions up here. I have no open questions at the moment. What we have in here is a whole long list of TV shows that we all must watch. So if anybody has any questions about any of that, I will be delighted to answer it. Can I explain, explain again why we should not have an agenda at a live event? Um, you know what, as you ask the questions too, um, I, I, I'll, um, I can see that that question is coming from Orla. Look, a, li a live event and an online event are two completely different um, scenarios. Live events are about really, you've got an audience in front of you. It's really about getting your audience interaction going. It's about settling your audience down. It's about getting your audience leaning forward in their seat and, and um, making them collectively feel reassured as a group. Very often, and I suppose there are some events where an agenda will work, like if, for example, you are delivering a presentation um, at a procurement event or at a procurement presentation session, for example, you'll be following a very strict agenda. But typically at a live event, if you put an agenda up there, it's literally like as though you've arrived into the cinema to watch a movie and they've started to play the closing credits for you. It's something that I just don't need to listen to what it is that you're going to follow through with me. Hook me in, get me interested in what it is that you're going to say, and I will lend you my ears. So an agenda generally is something at, um, for a presentation at a live event that tends to turn your audience off and make them switch off and hop onto their phone. But unfortunately, uh, or in, in a, there, there are significant differences between a live event and an online event. Uh, Mary has a question here. Orla, I hope that answers that question for you. I will stick around at the end of today's session and we will have the chance to ask more detailed um, questions or more specific questions at that stage. So Orla, I hope that's answered um, the question for you. But if not, do please stick around and I'll be able to give you more detailed information on that. Mary. Um, Camilla, just before you, you yeah. answer that question, Julie's asked a question as well and similar to Mary's point. So if it's just one more question, Diane, if you sure. were to scan over that, maybe we can get the two of them in one. Yes. Okay. Julie, audience interaction is a good way to keep your audience engaged. What are your tips for an online one? Yes, Julie. I mean, I've been to so many webinars where people 
the, the hosts run polls. Polls can really interrupt the flow of an online event. If you run a poll and then you end up sitting around for five minutes waiting for people to answer the poll and then waiting to see results, they can often feel as though they're a little bit self-serving, that they can be something that are of more use to the host than they are to the attendees. Um, and a lot of the time people's tolerance for sitting around at an online event is really so much lower. They don't have their friend beside them. They're not drinking at their cup of tea in a hotel venue. So um, polling can be used judiciously. I think it's about chopping your content up actually and uh, keeping the event moving along. So I've delivered about 15 minutes of content here today. I've introduced a Q&A. Very shortly, I'll move into the next section of my delivery. I think chunking your content is probably something that I would experiment with. Um, I'm start, I will talk in a moment too about timing of events, but the question needs to be asked too, does your webinar need to be one hour long? Can you deliver that content in a shorter, tighter time frame? So audience interaction at an online event, it, it's something that you, you probably do need to be careful with. It's just not going to be the same as at a live event where people get to see one another, they see the person who's asking the question. Um, it, it, it just lacks that personality at an online event. Okay, Paul was asking, will you get a copy of the slides? This whole webinar is being recorded, so that will be available online after the event. Mary, are there any particular aspects of one-on-one -on -one communication online rather than a webinar that you would highlight? Mary, I think what you're asking me is if you're at a Zoom meeting perhaps with another person, I think a lot of the time making sure that you're looking at the camera is really important. Sometimes I've seen people presenting online where um, maybe there's a screen over here and they forget that actually the camera is here. So they're looking over here and they're absolutely looking at a lovely, fantastic big screen that's got all of the detail on it, but they're not actually looking at their audience. I think a lot of the time it is about that eye contact. Um, one of the other things to consider, Mary, with one-on-one -on -one communication online is that time lag and the broadband dropping out. So I suppose enunciating, enunciating carefully, making sure that you deliver a little bit more slowly than you might necessarily do at um, a live event would probably be something that I would consider. But we can talk about that further at the end if I haven't answered that question fully for you. Um, Stephanie. Uh, last event I delivered, I was put off by Zoom faces. Yes, I know, that is something I get put off by my own face. I go, oh my goodness, look at the state of me. Oh my God, look at that hair, it's all out of place. Do you know what I sometimes do? I sometimes get this A4 piece of paper and I just put it over all those Zoom faces and then I don't get put off by them. Stephanie, that's something that really can affect people at a live presentation as well. Very often you're sitting there um, st or standing up on a stage and your audience is sitting in front of you and they're sitting there with their arms crossed and they look like they're at the most boring event of their whole life. They just have their audience face on and actually afterwards when you speak to them you realize that they were really very engaged and interested in what it is that you're saying. I think it's no different online. We're sitting in very often our bedrooms or our kitchens or our living rooms. We're completely at home in our surroundings. So we're just sitting there quite relaxed, whilst the poor speaker is working really, really hard to keep everybody engaged, but we're just hanging out. So I think don't be put off by Zoom faces is the first thing to say. Do not project thoughts into their head that they're actually not having. But if it is really putting you off, get out that A4 page and just make sure that you can't see them at all. I think what I'll do now at this stage to make sure that we keep on track for time, I'm going to keep going, but I will stick around at the end. So do come back to me if you've got any further questions at the end of the event. Um, I don't know if we have results for that poll, Jacqueline, before I move on. Let's see what everybody, right. I've attended, yeah, the boring webinars. Um, I will run my first webinar soon. Okay, so a lot of you are at the point where you're running your first webinar. You really want this, for those of you, your webinars need to be smooth and slick and you want to make sure that they're in keeping with your organization's reputation. And then my events have all been cancelled. I'm running them online. Great. Well, look, lots and lots of reasons there. Um, hopefully there's something here for all of you. I tried to think of those types of situations when I was putting this event together because literally each one of those are the reasons why people are approaching me for support at the moment. 
Great. Well, thank you all very much for contributing to that. I will keep going. I've got some technical tips now that I hope will help you, for, especially for those of you who are running a webinar for the first time. It can be a daunting experience. It can be something where you're just not sure of the tech. For me, I think test, test, test. Like me, get out your laptop, get out your teddy bears, get Spotify playing in the background so you can hear what the sound likes and go into another room in the house, get out the iPad and see what does that event look like as an attendee. But let's take a look and see what you can do to keep your event moving as uh, smoothly as possible. Here are some technical tips that I unfortunately have learned the hard way. If webinars are something that you're going to be doing, an investment in a webcam can be a good idea, 100, 120 pounds. I actually have not made that investment. I usually am sitting in front of a window with lots of light coming in on my face. I've invested in a light box to make sure that my face is lit up. So I haven't spent the money on a webcam just at the moment. My webcam is not the highest resolution in the world, but you know, it, it works absolutely fine. Watch out though with the light, make sure that you're positioning yourself so that the light isn't coming in over your shoulder and competing with the camera, you will just be in the shadows. Um, I have bought myself a light box like that. You can see this particular speaker is sitting beside a window. So rather than have that light flooding in from the side and uh, just lighting up one half of her face, the other half of her face might end up in the shadows. She's gone ahead and bought a light box and attached it to the top of her computer. Um, watch how you frame your screen. If your laptop is down low, it never looks ideal. Sometimes you spend webinars looking at the top of people's heads like this or, um, you know, looking down like that. So just make sure that you're framing your laptop so that you're framed up nicely in the screen um, as, as far as you possibly can. This is where the esteemed economist Stephen Kinsella delivers all of his radio interviews or, and his TV interviews. Can you believe it? Who would have thought that he's standing at his ironing board? There is certainly a point to be made for standing up when you're delivering your webinars. I'm sitting down today, but very often if it was a short event, I would actually stand up. And certainly for a media interview, I like to have that punchy energy in my voice. So standing up is a good idea. That light, you can see, he's positioned his ironing board so that that light floods his face and he will just look great on camera. So ironing boards, who would have known that that is your next little secret um, tip to look great on camera? Um, leaning forward is a good thing to do. Um, this comes from a website called How Not To Look Fat On TV. Look, flattering or not, you do just look more engaged and interested if you're leaning towards the camera rather than leaning right back. If you're on a chair with swivels, watch it because you can find yourself doing this and it is super distracting for your audience if you're swiveling around the place all over the place. So try and keep yourself grounded. It also adds to your gravitas as a speaker if you're able to keep yourself still and grounded and look at that camera and look your audience in the eye. Watch that jingly jangly jewelry. All of you men with your medallions, watch that too because um, that can be that can make noise and distract against your microphone as well. Um, even for men, I think a little bit of powder puff can be a good idea. Presenting can be an anxiety inducing experience. So you know what, just to tone down that sheen, especially if the light is flooded in on your face, a little bit of um, powder can really, really help. I always think this is definitely something that I would make an investment in. People will tolerate bad video, but they won't tolerate bad audio. And as it is with broadband chopping in and out, you, your audience deserves the best quality audio that they can get. On the um, left-hand side of my screen there is the Yeti Blue microphone. That's the microphone that I'm actually using for today's webinar. It's um, a USB mic that's great for the PC. On the right-hand side, I've got the Rode IXY mic. That's the one that I use when I'm recording a video on my iPad. Both of those pieces of kit, I think are essential if you're going to be delivering a webinar. Half the time when I attend a webinar, the person sounds as though they're underwater. So invest in that technology. Both of those devices are about 100, 120 pounds and are well worth the investment. Um, one thing to do with your Zoom, it's super intensive on your processor. Those of you who've ever been on a Zoom call with your friends on your phone, you will realize how quickly your battery runs down because the processor is working overtime to connect over the internet and to process 30 frames per second. So turn off all of your background applications and make sure that your webinar software gets full access to the CPU. It will make a difference to the quality of your webinar. Make sure to look at that camera, watch that dot. You can find yourself looking around the screen. I'm looking at myself right now. Um, I'm looking at my slides at the moment. 
but right now I'm looking at you because I'm looking at the webcam. So make sure and give your audience the eye contact that they need. What time should you do your webinar? Lots of people ask me this one. Well, Mid and East Antrim Borough Council have chosen a halfway point between the two most popular times to run a webinar. Uh, 11 o'clock in the morning is deemed to be the most popular by um, medium.com, followed swiftly by 10 a.m. But actually, pre-COVID times, very often a lunch and learn session was a popular time. Now that we're all um, trying to work from home or do work from our homes, really, rather than work from home in many cases, everything is kind of blurred and, and lunchtime is no longer the, the sort of sacrosanct time that it was. For those of you, and some of my clients find themselves in this position, who are perhaps running webinars for clients in multiple time zones, well, depending on numbers, you may consider running two, just because sometimes if you choose a time zone that's spanning both, so if you choose maybe a mid-afternoon time zone to try and get the folks in the US in as well as your European clients, you kind of fall between two stools. You don't end up at an optimum time for the guys in the US or for the people in Europe. So you may want to consider running those events at two separate times. Um, a, we a webinar series is always a good idea. So if you're going to run a webinar, believe it or not, unlike our viewing habits with TV, where we no longer make an appointment to view a TV program anymore, Actually, when it comes to webinars, we kind of like the security of having the same time every week in our diaries. Uh, Julie Pollock, who you asked me a question during the Q&A, it's been fantastic to see the work that the London Dairy Chamber has done since the beginning of this, you know, very stressful time for businesses. Every Thursday morning, um, at the same time every week, there is uh, a webinar with local experts sharing their experiences. And every week, Julie comes on and gives her HR advice to a lot of companies who are, I know, you know very grateful for that, for that um, advice from you, Julie. So um, planning a series is a good idea. Um, we talked a little bit about duration. Webinars tend to be scheduled for an hour. Do they need to be an hour? From the software industry, who is they're, they're veterans of running webinars, the ideal webinar duration for software companies um, when they're presenting to their clients has turned out to be 40 minutes. On the right hand side here, you can see that 85% um, of people would prefer webinars either 30 or 45 minutes long. So that's what we're going to endeavor to do today. Um, before I finish up, I would like to um, introduce you to a company who can really help you. If you need to do a slick event and you feel as though um, we've a little bit of Zoom fatigue has set in, I would recommend the services of Focus AV. Focus have been the company that has been broadcasting the daily briefings from Stormont. So they have really built up expertise in bringing speakers in from outside the room, connecting the journalists in. You can see there's a journalist in the foreground here, but since that time, um, nobody has been able to attend those webinar, attend those briefings. So they have now got the ability to stream in your video, to dial in your speakers. They've got the mixing desk. They've got all of the, the live event equipment that can really take your event to the next level. So if you want a conference style experience, I would definitely recommend bringing in the AV experts just to add that little bit of extra pizzazz. I certainly have found myself attending conferences where it's just lacking that little bit of production value. So if you want it to be slick, have a chat with the experts. So look, that's where I'm at for today. Um, literally I've run over by five minutes. I want to wrap up. I will stick around for Q&A now at this stage. But um, if you want to learn more, please do connect with me over Twitter at Bespoke Comms. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I've got three ways that you can access further information if what I've said today has been of interest to you. The first one is paid, but the other two are completely free. So for in the first instance, um, myself and Sarah as Bespoke Communications will be running a powerful presentations um, workshop for the Northern Ireland Chamber on the 22nd of June. If you would like to learn more, if you would like to invest in your skills, we would absolutely love to have you along at that event. You can go onto the NI Chamber website and find more information there. Um, this is completely free to you. We've developed a webinars that work course. So if you want to connect with me, send me your email address. I will um, give you access to that online course completely free of charge. And the other thing, you can hear me speaking at the Social Selling Summit. It has moved completely online and I will be speaking, I will be the afternoon keynote on the 18th of June. So if you want to hear a little bit more about how to deliver webinars and online sales pitches, I'll have a slot there. So look, thank you so much for um, listening to me today. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, Sean, and the whole team at Mid and East Antrim Council for allowing me the opportunity to get in front of you today. 
I did ask you what your expectations were for the event. Um, I wonder if I could pop up our second poll, if you don't mind, and ask, have your expectations been met today? Really simple question for you. Yes or no? I'm going to ask. Miller, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I just, and Julie has asked another question. I'm not sure if you have seen that one. It's a bit around um, feedback and evaluation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. I, I, will, I will come to that one now, Julie. I'm going to stick around now till 11.30, so I will answer any questions that come up on the Q&A. And if you've got something specific, we could maybe even bring you in um, you know, to ask that question in person. So we asked you why you were here today. Have we met your expectations really, really simply? Yes or no? If there's anything that further that you'd like to hear, do please connect with me outside of the event today. Um, but I do hope that I've given you some information that will help you um, that will help you along. So I don't know, Jacqueline, if you feel as though most people have answered that by now. I'll end up for you now. That's great, thank you. Because I want to pop up the next poll, the final poll. We've got to the end of the webinar today and the million dollar question is, what else were you doing as you were listening to me? So please do let us know. I did pop up a slide that showed all of the activities that people typically engage in when they attend a webinar. So were you doing other work? Were you visiting the bathroom? Were you sending a text? Were you the person who was playing video games? Do please let me know. I would love to hear. And you know what? If you're the person who, if, if you actually were I have just noticed that my final um, option was not actually on that has not actually appeared on that poll. So there's a limit of how many options you can have in the poll. Well, do you know what? The last question that I had up there was no, I did none of the above. I was completely fascinated by everything that you said and I didn't do any of those things. But you know what? It's OK. Go ahead and admit to it if one of those things was you. So Jacqueline, maybe you pop up and see, did we um, answer people's expectations or how did people feel about today's event? I think it's always oh, good to have proof of the pudding. Just, just told. So Julie, literally you're asking me that question. Feedback afterwards, it's next to nigh impossible to get it from people. Um, everybody's busy at the moment. I actually have noticed that um, post-event feedback has actually even declined from it's usually exceptionally low levels to almost non-existent. Um, if you had 100 people at an event, I think at the moment, great. Okay, 93%. Thank you. Those 7%, do please connect with me afterwards and hopefully I can answer your specific questions after the event. Um, yes, look, unfortunately, Julie, that's where we're at at the moment. I think um, doing other work, sending an email, sending a text. So most of you were sending texts, checking social media. Well, I would have loved to have that other one up there to find out how many of you were actually glued and riveted um, to the session today and nobody was playing video games or buying shoes during um, an important Stormont committee meeting either. So back to our questions. Um, feedback, yeah, so look, Julie, unfortunately that's where we're at. It is difficult to get them. I tend to just quickly put up a, a really quick and dirty answer, did this work today? Um, and if, if I get that information from my attendees, I feel like I'm quite happy. 93% satisfaction for today is probably not a bad place to be. Stephanie, same as watching it really is. You know, when TV first came out back in the 1960s, um, public speakers had to move from this sort of bombastic style of pre presentation where you got up on a soapbox and you had to really boom and shout really loudly. And it was those politicians and public speakers who were able to engage in a more intimate way with their audiences that really managed to make, make a success of TV as a medium. And I honestly think we're at that inflection point now today as well, where people who have been used to standing up at huge conferences, 700 people in front of them, you've now got an intimate one-to-one -one connection with your audience and the way that you present needs to change to reflect that, at least for the time being. Um, thank you, Mike. Really, really nice. Um, yes, I, I'm really delighted to have been here with the council. So thank you very much to the team and the economic development team. This is something that all companies are going to have to get to terms with. Um, we're all going to have to learn how to do online events. So thank you. It's been a really informative event. Thank you so much for putting it on from Mike. Mary, thank you very much. That's nice. So nice feedback here. Portia, lovely to see you here. So Portia, what were you asking? Is there any other provider you recommend? Look, Portia, honestly, there are as many platforms out there as you can possibly imagine. I've delivered across 
but go to webinar, go to meeting, WebEx. Um, I've obviously um, used Skype in the past. I'm trying to think of any other platforms in particular that are strong versus another. You know, each platform has its own nuances, but at their core, they offer the same service. There may be slight differences. Sometimes the polling options within WebEx are a little bit better than they are within um, Zoom. But depending on what you want to achieve, it can be worth having a little Google there. I, I noticed that there are some platforms starting to emerge that we know nothing about, which um, offer a little bit more flexibility than the, than the Zoom environment. I see that Google now have increased their um, participant numbers on their Google Hangouts. So their Google Meetings have now become much more of an option for us. So I would maybe just stay on top of that with some web searches. If there's something specific you wanted to do, uh, maybe we could have a chat offline about it and I could maybe recommend one platform over another. But at their core, they're all quite similar. Michelle, building good slides, right. First place first, I would say um, images, images, images. Try and get away from the text as much as you possibly can. The other thing with text at the moment is that beforehand, we used to be standing up at these venues with huge big screens behind us, maybe a wall of TVs or a massive, massive, um, massive, massive screen that the audience could see. Very often your audience is attending your event on their smartphone. And if you've got um, lots and lots of text, they're just going to be looking at the phone and they won't be able to see it, so it will put them off. So Michelle, if there's anything I could say to you, it would be use as many images as you possibly can. The other thing with slides is, I think you probably need more of them than you do at um, a live event. Sally Ann. Oh, <laughs> trying to have a right. We're all homeschooling at the moment and his schoolwork came out envelope size. That is why you need tech help. Right, well, look, connect with me if you've got a question about the platforms. I'll try and help you. Um, I do find at the moment having a computer science background has been really, really helpful to me. But honestly, the first time you go onto any platform, it's daunting. Practice, practice, practice. Get the teddy bears out. That's all I can say. Um, it would have been the other option. De oh, Lynn, thank you so much. You dedicated your time to listen. Well, I would love to see your blog post or your tweet as, as the event, um, at the end of the event. Stephanie. Um, is asking about using breakout rooms. I think they're great. I think it depends on the event that you want to run, but certainly if you've got a more intimate event and you want to pair people off, absolutely fantastic. For me, as somebody who's used to delivering online or delivering training, um, I find the breakout rooms really, really great. Really, really great. But you know what? They can be hard to manage, so you need to make sure that you're not, like today's event was very much a broadcast webinar for me. If I had to start trying to manage participants breaking out into rooms, it's just not the format of event that would have worked today. But for a smaller, more intimate event, absolutely, I think breakout rooms are the way to go. Orla, if you're experiencing, oh goodness me, your broadband cut out, did it? If you are experiencing tech difficulties during the webinar, at what point should you give up and cancel the event or what backup, backup plans could help? Orla, if the broadband is cutting in and out, if your speaker is just not coming in, I think watch what's been happening on the radio and on the TV. Um, certainly on the commercial stations, they go to a commercial break whilst they try and resolve those issues. Um, on BBC Radio now, I hear that, um, even before this event, of course, FaceTime and, and Skype and all of these tools were being used. Unfortunately, if you've got a panelist who's just not being heard by your, by your event, they just have to go. It's, people just will not tolerate it. So I think if you really are having a lot of choppy difficulties, unfortunately, I think it might be time to abort and exit stage left. There's lots of things that you can do in advance to try and plan for that. Like today, Jacqueline, we shared slides in advance just in case it all went wrong. Um, I have a comfort level at the moment with my broadband at home. But my big thing before I run an event is I go around the house and I make sure that absolutely everybody in my family knows that there is no YouTube, there is no streaming, there is no gaming during a time that I'm running an event so that the, the broadband isn't competing. I want to hog all of that broadband for just me when I'm running a webinar. And so far, they've been quite good about that. Emma, thank you, good tips. Um, Julie, yeah, nice to hear from you. Um, Lynn, would you always have the narrative along with the slides and webinar? I'm not sure I understand that question. Do you want to come in and ask that question? Um, um, with your voice, or do you want to open up, ask that question um, live? I don't Can't know. Maybe talk into the closed captions that we were unable to turn off. Oh, right. 
Okay, okay, I understand. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. So Lynn, that your question relates to the closed captions at the bottom of the screen. That's something that Mid and East Outrib Council have done to make their events more accessible to everybody. So anybody who's hard of hearing, um, they now have um, what actually is very high quality subtitles at the bottom of the screen. It's managed to capture more or less what it is that I'm saying. So look, that's an accessibility choice for you. It's an option that I did not know about until today, but as somebody who's got a, um, I'm, I'm personally friendly with um, somebody who is, who is deaf, who has no hearing at all. I think anything you can do to make your event more accessible, why not? Great. Um, so I think that is most of the questions. Oh, Portia. Yeah. Subtitles are a great idea. The software for the subtitles, Stephanie, is built into Zoom. So Gary, you have opened up a whole new world to us today. Thank you for that. A whole new world for everybody, for sure. Absolutely. Well, look, I think at this stage, everybody seems to have answered, asked all of their questions. I would say a huge thank you to the team at Mid and East Antrim. Thank you for having me along today. And thank you to all of you who've stayed with the event. I hope it's been valuable for you. I would love to hear from you on LinkedIn or on Twitter afterwards. So thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Camilla. Uh, Thank hopefully you. everyone find that beneficial. Um, we've also quite a lot of people who weren't able to join us today. Um, registration problems with Zoom. So again, I think this is a learning experience whenever we're putting out um, the meeting invites um, to make sure people have registered in advance because we have numerous problems uh, trying to, to get online today. So. We'll share the details of the webinar afterwards. Thank you very much. Thanks a million. Thank you, team. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.